Hey everybody! Hey, guess what? I got some news! <laughs> the children are starting to play nicely on the playground! <laughs> oh, for y'all who are parents, you know how it is. Sometimes the children just don't get along with other children, right? And I'm starting to see that God is blessing all of us. We're all getting messages from God and we're helping each other and encouraging each other as we're in the tabernacle in our tabernacles and um, and we still in our tabernacles we still have connection with other people in the body this is just really really cool I don't know enough about tabernacles whether the I don't know who went in the tabernacles I assume it was the family and that the family stayed in the tabernacle and they weren't out I don't know I don't know. I don't know if it was just where they were slept and then the rest of the time they were fellowshipping with other believers. I don't know. Um, but when, I li when I'm reading these comments, I am just blown away. The Holy Spirit is on the move, giving people all these different things, just keeping us so focused, so focused, so... Um, excited still crazy uh <laughs> bob i think his last name is bowers i'm not sure he sent me a thing like yeah you're a crazy christian and i thought there's got to be something i can come up with like I, I've, I've named diana landris um dancing diana oh my gosh my phone is ringing and it's look at that three 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 <laughs> God. Oh my gosh, you're so amazing. Really. Okay, y'all. In fact, in my comments, I put one night I had finished reading a book by Steve Sampson called um, something like Hearing the Voice of God or something like that. Or you it's it's something like you can hear God or something like that. And that night I woke up and he said things God hates and I looked at my clock and it said two 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 of course, 222 is a huge number to me. And then the same night, I thought, wow, that's cool. Things out hates. That's what I'll spend my next day uh, reading because God talks about what he hates. He hates divorce. He hates the man who uh, divorces his wife, covering her with violence. Um, he hates, in, in Proverbs 6, he says, you know, these are the six things the Lord hates, no seven things that he despises or something like that. Two of the, of the seven are lying. He hates lying. <laughs> he is the truth, the way, and the life. He does not accept. He doesn't want us lying. Period. End of story. You know, I had the wine glass where I tried to say a lie and the stem of the wine glass exploded. And then, uh, then my husband ended up leaving and then I got a, and then I got my baptism done. My, you know, my testimony was being a, counterfeit Christian basically with Psalm 50 15 trust me in your times of trouble and I will rescue you and you will give me glory <laughs> and then I had that same wine glass which had no stem fly out of the kitchen cabinet in front of my son and me and land on a ceramic bowl white on white raised ceramic bowl I've done a video showing a picture of it or I mean I've got it in my house it's right behind me I haven't been able to find the wine glass since I moved but I have, I still have the bowl. I found it uh, not too long ago. But the the, <laughs> the wine glass hit the ceramic bowl and broke the bowl into two pieces. Cracked the bowl, two pieces. It, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. God's in, he does miracles. Um, so I was like going through my comments and uh, you know I tr I try to keep an open mind. I really do because. You know, the Bible says we're not to think of ourselves more highly and that God is no respecter of persons. And, you know, God gives um, messages to the lowest of the watchmen. Um, you know, he, he, he opposes the proud and he gives grace to the humble. That's what it boils down to. And like I watched that man who um, was confirming that, that it has to be Feast of Tabernacles it just has to be whether it's tabernacles this year or tabernacles next year or the year or the year after that. It still has to be tabernacles. And he had gotten fired up about the rapture because because his five-year-old daughter had drawn a picture of the rapture. And he's like, 
What is this? Where, who told you about this? Because he could tell it was a rapture. Who told you about this? Did you learn this at church? No, Daddy. God gave it to me. <laughs> so, somebody had left me a message. And it's starting to get warm. I might have to turn my fan on. Someone had left me a message of this guy who's trying to get a hold of Scotty Clark. Who... Whose confirmation number is 222 also. Because his birthday is 222. February 22nd. And God told him to, to look up. There's a movie. And there's a movie called 222. And so now he's trying to get the message to Scotty Clark about this movie. But his video is an hour long. So what, it, what happened was I started... Um, this is so amazing. I started watching it and I was like, okay, this is something I need to pay attention to. But the pro but I said, okay, I'm going to have to come back to that. I'm going to get back to, uh, I think it's Tia Mora, Mori. I don't know how to pronounce her. It's anyway. But she has this really beautiful blue flower, bright blue flower as her icon. I guess that's what you call it. And, um, so I got back. I, I, I went to go back to comment on her to tell her, yes, thank you so much for sending this. I'm going to watch this video. And when I went back into my um, my video, to I had two 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 views. Yes, two 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 views. When I'm talking about a two 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 movie from a guy whose birthday is two two two. I mean, I told y'all. I told you. I told you. I told you. I prayed. And God is answering my prayer because I prayed and I said, God, I will take as many confirmations as you can give me. I said, if it's like a fire hose and I'm going to go like this, bring them on. Bring them on. And he is. He is. Oh, praise you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then to be recording this and I get the 333. 333 that night when he told me 222. God thinks God hates 222. Then he said, God permeates the Christian. 333. When we have the Holy Spirit, we are permeated with the Holy Spirit. We are a pleasing aroma to God. And our prayers are going into the golden bowls um, uh, that are being held by the 24 elders at the throne. Just, you know, isn't that, it just blows you away. So also I had, I had someone... Um, someone point out uh, about seeing heart rocks I've done a video I've got now this is amazing to me I don't have four or five heart rocks okay I have three small heart rocks and one big giant granite heart rock that thick I've got a video on it I've got on the, on the thumbnail it has a picture of the heart rock oh yeah look at there I'm gonna make a heart <laughs> so She's talking about heart rocks. God gives me another confirmation. Three in one. I posted a video called Three in One. The tabernacle, the, the three feasts, the three fall feasts are one, just like the three spring feasts. Then somebody put in some scripture about the third day with Moses and Sinai. And I'm just like, he's like, he's like, oh, that means it's probably the, the 10th of October. And I didn't even, it was like, as I'm reading it, I'm reading it. And, and then when he came to his conclusion, I was like, that's not what I thought as I was reading it. I thought about the possibility of, <laughs> and I wrote it out. So I'm just, I, I haven't spent time with God. I haven't asked him this. This is just me thinking. Um, I thought about the three days being, just as we say that Jesus rose on the third day right it was not three 24 hour periods it was death on the first day which was passover uh in the grave on the second day which was unleavened bread and resurrection on the third day which was the morning um after the sabbath which was sunday so if you took those same numbers and applied them to the beginning of tabernacles and you want to find out what the third day is um i <laughs> i'm thinking i've got another High watch time because the it could be that if it's if it's represented that way we would have um, tabernacles beginning then the next day is the quiet day if you want to say and then the next day would 
would actually be the morning of the Jewish Sabbath. You know, the Sabbath starts at, at night, um, the night before, but the Jewish Sabbath morning, Jesus is the bright morning star, would be this Saturday morning, uh, October 7th. Seven, huge, huge number. Okay, then we have the possibility of it being October 5th plus three days. Five plus three is eight. That brings us to Sunday morning, the 8th, right? I'm, I think I got this right. Sunday morning, the 8th. The, <laughs> 5 plus 3. 5 is grace. 3 is trinity. 8 is the number of Jesus. And also, the 8 is the number of tabernacles. No joke. If you go into a numbers book and you're looking up what the meanings of different numbers, one of the meanings of 8 is... Feast of Tabernacles. It's the only feast that lasts for this length of time. Plus, we have all the symbolism of, you know, we're going to be tabernacling and that Jesus, when he came down, he was God with us. He was tabernacling with us. I mean, this stuff is really... <laughs> I am so excited. And I just can't hide it. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for asking God... Um, you know, to give you information, a shout out to Char. Um, you know, I have had a few people on here. They're like, I really want, I know, I, I know that I, I know God and he speaks to me in this way. Say, say for instance, he, he speaks to me with songs. Obviously he speaks to me with songs and he speaks to a lot of people with songs. Um, but then it's like, it's just like layer upon layer on the different ways I think, yeah, I think I said Larry Kreider has a book on the 30 different ways that God speaks. He is speaking all the time. But you do have to have, you have to be able to tune in. And Char, her teaching, it was like her video came up while I was uh, writing, uh, writing out the description, I think, in one of the one of the videos and I was like oh that's what these people you know I've done a teaching and I've taught people about how to hear from God that's I mean that's been something I've done pretty consistently for 12 years I don't care if you think I'm crazy that I hear from God let me tell you he does speak and he you can hear from him um, I've had pastors oh no God doesn't speak to me that way I'm like how do you preach how do you preach if God is not speaking to you no they're like no I never heard from God you know, I read my Bible. I'm like, whoa, where is the anointing there, right? Where is the anointing? You're just, you're just putting out words. You're, I mean, yeah, you're reading scripture. Not that you're reading very much. If you know who you're talking, who I, if you know who I'm talking about, <laughs> very big pastor in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, you know, it's like this much scripture. Like even sometimes he's even done sermons where he's like, I'm not going to speak any scripture to you today. It's a huge seeker church. What is what what is the script what are the scriptures? Why why would a seeker friendly pastor not use the scriptures? What did what is what, what does our Jesus look like right now? He is the Jesus in Revelation 19. He's on a white horse. He's got faithful and true down his thigh. He he's got eyes that are like flame, hair white as wool. And he's got a big, gigantic, double-edged sword coming out of his mouth. That's not how you typically want to think of your groom. <laughs> but don't you want your groom to be a, a warrior who has victory? Yes. Yes. And his victory comes through the Word of God. He is the Word of God made flesh. John 1. Can you believe that same preacher who says he doesn't hear from God and he doesn't use Scripture to talk to his seeker-friendly people... Someone said, Terry, you're being too hard on him. Give him another chance. I said, okay, I will. I was there for six years. I heard all the false teaching coming out of his mouth and, and the lemmings and the, oh my goodness, the people who think hyper grace, sin, sin, all you want, just keep on sinning. It just is all great, you know. Everything's forgiven. No, no repentance, no holiness, no sanctification. That is not, that's not the gospel. It just plain isn't. So this same, somebody said, hey, give him another chance. His name is Andy Stanley. It's, it's you know, I've been very, in fact, when I called up and said, I'm leaving your church, 
um, it was the Wednesday before he preached the When Truth He Met Gracie sermon that, man, did it hit the the Christian fan, if you want to say, because he was saying, yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's going with this this thing. You can be... Um, you can be homosexual and be in his church. You can be a uh, you can be a homosexual Christian. Yes, you can be a homosexual Christian. How is that? Just like you can be an adulterer Christian. You can be an idolater Christian. You can be a liar Christian. You can be all that that you were. It's First Corinthians six, nine, ten, and eleven, maybe, or maybe just nine and ten. He. Paul names all the different kinds of Christians there are. He says, that's what you were, but now this is who you are. So you cannot be, you can be a homosexual Christian who is, who has surrendered their life to Jesus Christ and they're no longer walking in the sin. Just as the woman who was forgiven of adultery and was going to be stoned. What did Jesus say? I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. So you cannot be living a a uh, willingly sinful lifestyle. You cannot be living with somebody. You cannot be looking at porn. You cannot be um, just doing whatever you want. And I think it's like spitting on Jesus. I do. I think it's like spitting on Jesus. Do we or are we able to give up these sins on our own? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit convicting of our of our sins. And curing us from our disease, right? Sin is a disease. It's dis-ease, actually. And then, when we are cured, we go out and tell people about what has happened in our lives because what happened in history and in our, our history of our sins and our the dirtiness that we had that we didn't even realize until the Holy Spirit convicted us, when that happens then it becomes his story. History, his story written on our hearts, written on our lives. And that's why we're motivated to share our testimonies and the word of God with people and, and to share what the good news is. It's not good news if you don't have victory over your sin. <laughs> it's not good news if you haven't received the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. It's not good news if you're just walking just the same way as the world is. It's not good news. <laughs> just isn't. So thank you, thank you. My brothers and sisters, I can't wait to be with you. We are, we are, we are so full of the Holy Spirit. We thank Him. We thank Him for Him showing up and being poured out in these in this last generation, and to see what He is doing. I pray for people all over the world to be awake. That God will awake them. And. Uh, and there's that song from Johnson Ferry Worship, uh, Awakening. Um, I don't, I, I haven't listened to it in so long, I've forgotten about it, but um, I'll put it in the link. So I love you. Thanks for all the input. I really do. And and really, I, I've, it's been very few haters, so I've, I haven't had to remove very many people. All right? It's good. Bye-bye.